You guys have probably seen our video about the A380. This is the biggest passenger airplane and they stopped making it because it wasn't worth the hassle. But the A380 is not the biggest airplane. The biggest airplane produced to date is the Antonov 225 and its full name is Antonov AN-225 Maria. If we had today's knowledge about airplanes, Antonov would never have been made. This airplane was very thirsty. For each hour it flew, it used 20 tons of fuel. And it was such a giant that most of the airports around the world could not accept it. It seems like the fuel tank has a hole. A lot of airports don't accept it. So why was it ever made? This was designed as a tool for the USSR space program. The Soviets really thought about this pretty late because it was in 1989 when the airplane was ready. Two years later, the Soviet Union collapsed. The story of this airplane begins in 1982. And that's when the USSR decided to design an airplane that could carry their space shuttle. The USSR would design and build the shuttle in the western part of the USSR. But they would only launch from Kazakhstan, thousands of kilometers away. You might be asking, why didn't they carry it with trains or semi-trucks? Because it's very wide and it wouldn't pass through roads. And the only way to transport it was flying it. To start this, the USSR used the M4 bomber to carry the shuttle through the air. But this airplane compared to the shuttle was very weak and could not handle it. On the other hand, NASA would carry their shuttle with the 747 because 747 is extremely powerful and its size is compatible with the shuttle. And it could carry it with a few modifications. And the thing is, NASA didn't really need this airplane, but they could literally send the space shuttle through the roads. And they managed to send it through roads from California all the way to Florida. If you didn't know, NASA sends most of its shuttles from Florida, and they're built elsewhere. But let's get back to the Soviet Union. USSR didn't have roads wide enough to carry things from Moscow to Kazakhstan, and that is why they had to design an airplane. They noticed that the M4 is not really good for this, and that is why we need a new airplane so we're not lacking. They first designed the Antonov 124. When the Antonov 124 was finished, it was known as the biggest cargo carrier. But it seems like the Soviets really had to make everything big for no reason. It doesn't matter if it functions properly, it just has to be the biggest. The biggest compared to the whole wide world. And that is why they took the design of the 124 and pretty much made it wider, bigger, and stronger. They added two engines to each wing and made it six. They made it thicker and wider and they said the design is finished. After the landing gear came to mind and they noticed it's too weak for this airplane and they made it 32 wheels and tires. After they figured out the landing gear problem, another issue popped up. The back wing wouldn't allow giant shuttles to be on the back of this airplane. And that is why they were forced to modify the back wing and pretty much made it wide and double. This was the finished product. The Antonov 225 was born. The designers of this airplane were very proud of this 
and said we could literally launch space shuttles off this airplane. Take the shuttle as high as it could and the shuttle could be launched from there to space. They believe by doing this, they saved a lot of money on fuel. This was the story of this airplane that eventually in 1989 it was finished and it flew to Paris to show it off. Even though this was an amazing airplane and it kinda made the Soviets look good, but there was nothing good going on behind it because the Soviets were in such a bad spot that they were literally going bankrupt. The USSR never really used this for its full potential, but anywhere it could, it would show it off to the entire world. And in the year 1991, the USSR collapsed and this airplane was left in Kiev, capital of Ukraine. After the collapse of the USSR, Ukraine received independence and most of the USSR airplanes were in Ukraine and it was kind of leftovers for the Ukrainian government. The Ukrainians started a transport company and used these giant airplanes to move cargo around the world. They would ship locomotives or generators with these airplanes around the world. But most of this was done by the 124. The 225 was still sitting in the hangar and not being used. It was also very unique because there was only one made. At the end of the 90s, Ukraine government decided to pull this out of the hangar, recondition it and use it to move heavy objects. They pretty much spent $20 million to recondition it and made it ready for the transportation company. The first major object they moved was a 187 ton object that was made in Stuttgart, Germany and it was meant to ship all the way to Oman. They put the one piece object inside the airplane and in a few hours they were in Oman but they charged a good amount of money. A compact object like this that weighs 187 tons, no airplane can carry except for this. In our video about the Airbus A380, we mentioned that when it lifts off with full capacity, it has a weight of over 500 tons. But this is a one piece object and it's very compact. It's not spread out around the airplane like passengers and cargo. After that, it was a money-making machine for the Ukraine government and they charged $30,000 an hour to fly it. You might be saying, if it makes so much money, why don't they make more of these? The reason is, if you want to design and build one, it's not worth it. Since it's already been built, it's worth it to use it. But if you want to spend all the money on R&D, it's not worth it. But unfortunately, there's some bad news. Around 40 days ago, on February 24th, 2022, this airplane was parked in the Antonov airport in its own hangar. And unfortunately, the Russian army attacked it and destroyed the hangar and the airplane itself. Even though there was an explosion, but most of the damage came from fires. The Ukrainians were very devastated about this. They say just for this attack, they have to give $3 billion to rebuild the plane and the hangar. Do you guys think they will actually be able to rebuild this thing? There might be a day where this thing flies again. Please comment.